Now we're moving on to a little bit more complex equations. So solving equations with the variable on each side. So we noticed that in all the problems that we saw yesterday, and we will go over those, those are two-step, something that looked like this, super vanilla, super easy, minus 3, 2x, divide by 2, and you get x equals 3 halves. And then they were a little bit more complicated in the fashion of you would get something like x minus 4 over 5 equals 8. So the first thing we would do is multiply by 5. We get rid of the multiplication and division first. And now you have x minus 4 equals 40. Add 4. x equals 44. So both problems were two steps. It took you exactly two steps to isolate the variable. Today, we're going to have multiple steps, whether it's combining like terms, whether it's distribution, um, but we're going to have a lot more decision making and we're going to have to evaluate and look and observe the problem, the equation. So <clears throat> in this situation, we have two variables, 3w and 7w, but we need to see and notice that they're on different sides of the equal sign. And then we have one constant. So if we want to think about this logically, the constants have all been combined and they're on the left side. We have a variable on the left, uh, on the left side and we have a variable on the right side. So if we moved that variable over here, we'd have variables and constants on the left side and nothing on the right side. So we don't want to move our variables. And we always, one of the things, speaking of variables, we always, when we have two variables and maybe two constants, we always want to move the variables first. That's when we have multiple variables on either side of the equal sign. So we're going to move this variable, this 3w, we're going to get rid of it from this left side. And how do we get rid of this 3w? What's it doing to the 2? Well, it's adding. So what would the inverse of adding 3w? would be subtracting 3w. How would we get rid of a 3w on the left side? Well, if we did a negative 3w, those two will cancel. You're left with 2 equals. These are like terms. Whenever we add or subtract like terms, we combine their coefficients. Remember, that was a term that I talked about that was really important. Coefficients are numbers in front of the variables. So we're going to combine those coefficients. 7 and negative 3 makes 4. So we end up with 4w. And now this is a one-step problem. We should be very comfortable with this. What's happening to the variable is being multiplied by 4. Or 4 is multiplying it. So the inverse of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. You have 2 fourths equals w. We need to remember to always simplify fractions. So we have to reduce this fraction. 2 goes into both of those, the numerator and the denominator. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 4 is 2. So that would be my answer. So this is a unique question where we have variables on both sides and only one constant. This problem, we just grew it a little bit. We see that we have variables on both sides. And we have constants on both sides. So remember, we want to move the variables first. We want to group the variables on one side. On one side. So we have to pick. What do I want? Do I want to move the 5a or the negative 7a? It doesn't matter. You could subtract 5a from both sides in order to get rid of the variables on the left side. 
that would be okay. Or if you want to move the variables to the left side, we could get rid of the negative 7 on the right side. And that's fine also. You're going to get the same answer. It doesn't matter. So let's keep this because that's going to leave us with a positive coefficient. And now we have the variables all put together on the left side. So that means we're going to move the constants to the right. So this is a two-step equation. So moving it once, now it's a two-step. We get rid of things being added and subtracted first. So we have to get rid of that positive 2. That leaves us with 12a equals 4. 12 is multiplying. Inverse of multiplying by 12 is dividing by 12. A equals 4 twelfths. Remember, we always have to reduce fractions. What goes into 4 and 12? 4. 4 goes into 4 once. 12, 4 goes into 12 three times. Ah, now we again have variables on both sides. And we have constants on both sides again. So very similar to the problem we just completed. The only difference is we have fractions. Fractions should not be, should not make it any more challenging. Fractions are easy. Um, so we're going to move those variables first. Remember, always move the variables first. Don't move the constants first. So we're going to move that variable first. So do we want to move to the left side or to the right side? I'm going to get rid of the one quarter on the right side and I'm going to move it to the left side. So we have x over 2 and we have negative 1 fourth x. So when we deal with fractions, we need to have equivalent denominators. We have to have common denominators. So x over 2 is just like 1 half x. So I need to convert it to fourths. So 2 times what? 2 times 2 would give me 4. So if I multiply the denominator by 2, I need to multiply the numerator times 2. 2 times 1x gives me 2x. So 2x over 4 is equivalent to x over 2. The only difference is now we have common denominators. So we can combine those two fractions. 2x over 4 minus 1x over 4 leaves me with x over 4 equals, oops, not equals, sorry, plus 1 equals negative 6. Now I've combined my variables on the left side. That means I'm going to move my constants to the right. So minus 1, I get x over 4 equals negative 7. 4 is dividing mm -hmm. my variable. The inverse of dividing by 4 is multiplying by 4 and I get x equals negative 28. Last one. This is very similar to the first one where we have ver Ooh, not crayon. We have variables on both sides, but we only have one constant. So we still want to move the variables, but since our constants are grouped together on the right side, that means we want to push our variables to the opposite side of that, to the left side. So I'm going to get rid of that positive 33c by subtracting 33, 3.3c. Now I have like variables. I'm going to look at their coefficients, 1.3 and negative 3.3. And I'm always going to take the smaller from the larger. So I'm going to take 1.3 from negative 3.3, which gives me, so if we have 3.3 and positive 1.3, that's going to leave me with negative 2c. I have more negatives than positives, right? I have negative, I have 3.3 negatives and I have 1.3 positives. So it leaves me with negative 2c equals 2.8. These cancel. And now I'm going to divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. I'm left with C equals 2.8 over negative 2. I can't leave a, a decimal in a fraction. That is not simplified. So I can either use my calculator and do 2.8. That's not 2.8. 2.8. 
8 divided by 2, and I can get 1.4. So I'd say C equals negative 1.4. Why is it negative? Because we have a positive divided by a negative, which gives me a negative. Now, the other way we could have done this is we could have kept it as a fraction, and I could have moved that decimal point one place. If I move it in the numerator one place, I need to move the decimal point in the denominator one place. And that would have given me 28 over negative 20. And now we can start reducing that fraction. 28 over negative 20. I'm going to divide by 2 over 2, which would give me 14 over negative 10. I can reduce that by 2, which would give me 7 over negative 5. So I would have also accepted C equals negative 7 fifths. Both work. You should be equally proficient at working with decimals as you are with fractions. You're in eighth grade. This is something that you should have already mastered. If you don't, if you can't do this, then in your spare time, you have the responsibility of addressing that issue by practicing. All right, here's our first you try. I want you to try this problem, pause the video, tackle this problem, and then when you're ready, unpause it and I'll go through the explanation. Okay, so we have variables on both sides and we have constants on both sides. So we always have to move the variable first. So I'm going to move the variables to the left side. So I'm going to get rid of the variable on the right side. I'm going to minus 4x from both sides. That gives me 9x plus 2 equals 38. Now this is a two-step problem. I'm going to get rid of things being added and subtracted. So I'm going to subtract 2, and that gives me 9x equals 36. I'm going to divide by 9, and x equals 4. Check your work. Notice how nice and organized my description and my notes are. All right, now we get a little bit more complex. So this one, <clears throat> first thing we have to do is simplify. And we are going to simplify by distributing. We can't get to that S. And notice that we have S's on both sides. So some students would go, oh, let me add 2S. Well, you can't because Chewbacca is protecting the negative 2S. So we can't get to that until we get rid of that 3. Well, one way of getting rid of that 3 is by distributing it. So we can simplify through distribution. So the left side stays the same. We get 3 times 6 plus 3 times negative 2s. And that becomes 8s minus 10 equals 18 minus 6s. And now this is just like the problems we started with earlier in the lesson. We have variables on both sides, 8s and negative 6s. We have constants on both sides, negative 10, positive 18. We're always going to move the variables first. I'm going to move, I'm going to get rid of that negative 6s. So I'm going to get rid of it on the right side by adding 6s. They cancel. That gives me 14s minus 10 equals 18. And now we have a two-step problem. I'm going to get rid of what's adding and subtracting first. And then I'm going to divide by 14. And we get S equals 2. Now that is the eighth grade way to do that problem. I'm going to show you a little enrichment for those students who want a little bit more sophistication. And I'll show you how a high school student might do this problem. So one of the things that you can do, and this is super technical, this is probably not as efficient with this because the three is not a factor of eight S or negative 10, but 
Our objective, again, is to get rid of Chewbacca. Chewbacca's got to go home. So the only way we can get rid of Chewbacca is if we get rid of the three. One way is by distributing. Another way is by three is multiplying that quantity. So if I divide by three on the right side and do the same on the left side, I'll be able to get rid of those parentheses. Now, what I do when you multiply and divide a side, you have to do it to everything on that side. So you get 8s over 3 minus 10 over 3 equals 6 minus 2s. So we were able to get rid of Chewbacca. However, we created some crazy fractions. I'm comfortable with fractions. High school, advanced high school math students will be comfortable with fractions. So now, again, we have variables on one side and we have constants on the other side. Let's move the variables first. I'm going to add 2s. I'm going to add 2s. These cancel. I need common denominators, so I need a denominator of 3, and that is over 1. So 1 times 3 would give me 3 in the denominator, and that means I need to multiply the numerator by 3. So 6s over 3 is equivalent to 2s, and now I'm going to combine the numerator. 6s plus 8s gives me 14s over 3, e oh, excuse me, minus 10 over 3 equals 6. You're going, this doesn't seem easier. This is definitely not a problem. I would use this technique. But there will be problems that you have to, uh, that, that would be, but this is not one of them. This is far more complicated than the original method that I just showed you. All right, we got to get rid of things being added and subtracted. We're going to add 10 thirds. So again, we have to convert to thirds times 3 times 3 is 18 thirds. And 18 thirds plus 10 thirds gives me 28 thirds. And these cancel. So you're left with 14s over 3. We have a fraction multiplying the variable. The inverse of multiplying by a, a uh, by a fraction would be multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, and we are able to cancel the threes. Threes in the denominator cancels with a three in the numerator. 14 goes into 14 once. 14 goes into 28 twice, and we're left with s equals two. Whew. Not as efficient as that. That is way more easier to just distribute. And you can do that 100% of the time. Um, this one just was not as conducive to it. But again, I wanted to put it out there and see what some of the students who are more comfortable with this take on that challenge. All right. Here we have distribution outside of both of them. So both of our variables are inside Chewbacca. And so I, we, again, would choose to do the distribution in order to simplify. So 7 times n plus 7 times negative 1 equals negative 2 times 3 minus 2 times n. Remember what we are dis distributing. We're distributing the 7 to the n and to the negative 1. And in the other problem, we're distributing a negative 2 to the 3 and to the n. So 7 times n is 7n. 7 times negative 7. Negative 1 is negative 7. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times n is negative 2n. We have variables on both sides, and we have constants on both sides. So we're always going to move the variable first. Which one do we want to get rid of? I'm going to get rid of the negative 2n. What gets rid of a negative 2n is a positive 2n. These cancel. I'm left with 9n minus 7 equals negative 6. Now we have a two-step problem. We're going to get rid of what's being added and subtracted first. 
9n equals 1. We're going to divide both sides by 9, and n equals 1 ninth. Here's a you try. Take a moment, write down the problem, do it in your composition book, and let's see what you get. Unpause it when you are ready to hear the explanation. All right. The first common mistake that students will make is they will do the addition. You can't do addition before parentheses and multiplication. So do not do that. Since we can't combine what's inside the parentheses because they are unlike terms, one's a variable, one's a constant, we have to use the distributive property in order to simplify. So we have seven minus equals negative 11 plus three times b plus three times five. Seven equals negative 11 plus three b plus 15. Notice what happened here. This is a little bit unique, and hopefully you observed this. You have only one variable on the right side. There is no duplicate vari uh, variable. And notice about the constants. You have one on the left side, and then you have two on the right side. So remember, we talked about simplifying. Since they are on the same side, we can combine those. I'm going to simplify that before I do any moving of left and right of it. So I'm going to combine those. So I'm left with 7. Negative 11 and positive 15 gives me 4 plus 3b. Now this is a two-step I'm going to get rid of what's being added and subtracted. I need to get rid of a positive 4. I know that's a positive. What gets rid of a positive 4 is a negative 4. That leaves me with 3 equals 3b. Divide both sides by 3. 1 equals b. Hopefully you did that. Hopefully you got that solution. Woo! Look at that one. This is the maxed out one. This is the one that is the ultimate most step. So we look at orders of operations. We can't combine these. These are unlike, and the five is multiplying the parentheses. We can't combine what's inside the parentheses. So we're gonna choose to distribute the five into the parentheses to get rid of Chewbacca. Seven X plus five times X plus five times negative one equals negative five plus 12 X. Good. So we get 7x plus 5x minus 5 equals negative 5 plus 12x. Hopefully you notice that we have variables on the same side. You have two variables on the same side and one variable on the right side. So we're going to have to combine these before we move anything. That 7x and 5x gives me 12x minus 5 equals negative 5 plus 12x. Here is the reason why we always move the variables first. So I'm going to move the left variable. I'm going to subtract 12x. And what do we notice that mm. happens? What happened here? These variables cancel. These variable cancels. And we're left with a numeric statement. That's a numeric statement because my variables cancel. So because they cancel, they create a numeric statement, and now we have to evaluate. If the statement is true, which in this case it is true, that's a true statement, negative 5 equals negative 5. If it's true, then my answer is all real numbers. All real numbers. If the statement was false, if it said negative 5 equals 0, a numeric statement that would be false, it would be no solution, meaning there isn't a solution to this equation. 
Now we have to talk about what does all real numbers. So I want to see that you will see, I will constantly use all real numbers. You will see books that will use real numbers. You will see assessments and placement tests that say all real numbers. Another one could be, it's called the identity. You will see books also use the term identity. Okay. But to me, that doesn't make sense. And I'll, I'll explain why. In this problem, we had one solution. The only number that works as a solution to this starting problem is one. That is the only value that you can plug in for B to make this left side equal the right side. And we call that a solution. So there is only one solution. We also need to understand that there can be situations where there are no solutions. That's when the variable cancels and you get a false numeric statement. But there's also another situation where your numeric statement is true and it's all real numbers. And that means that you can put in any number in for X. You can put in one, you can put in two, you can put in one half, you can put in pi, you can put in the square root of two. Any number works as a, as a solution to this equation. So you're not held to just one answer like the previous one. There's only one solution for this equation. For this one, x plus 4 equals 5. How many solutions are there? There's only one. There's only one solution, only one number that you can plug in for x to make this statement true. 1. When you plug in 1, it makes the left side equal the right side. So there's only one solution to this problem. Well, that didn't work there. Well. In this problem, not that problem, in this problem, there are an infinite number of solutions. And what are the solutions? All real numbers. So any real number can go in there as a solution to this problem. Little advance, definitely something you should have learned in seventh grade, but we're going over it. So I would assume that there might be questions and I'm more than happy to go over it with you. Let's look at this problem. So we need to distribute. You're going to do six times y plus six times negative five equals two times 10 plus two times three y. We get 6y minus 30 equals 20 plus 6y. We're going to move the variables first. We're going to subtract 6y from both sides. You get negative 30 equals 20. Oh, these cancel and these cancel. So my variables cancel. and it created a numeric statement. Is this number statement true or false? Does negative 30 equal 20? It is false. So my answer is gonna be no solution. There is no number, there is no number that can go in for y to make the left side equal the right side. So we just saw both situations when variables canceled. We saw the true situation and we saw the false situation. You try this one. Pause the video. When you're ready, hit play and I'll explain it. We'll go over it. So first thing we need to do is distribute. We get 14V plus 6 equals 2 times 5 plus 2 times 7V minus 4. That gives us 14V plus 6 equals 10 plus 14v minus 4. First thing we have to do before we start moving, we have constants on the same side. So we want to simplify first. So let's simplify that. That gives me 14v plus 6 equals 6 plus 14v. Some of you will automatically, a red flag should go up and go, oh, I see. I see that the variables are going to cancel and I see that I'm going to end up 
with a true statement. So I write that statement is true and then I write all real numbers. And that is your answer. All of this needs to be your answer. The six equals six, the true, and the all real numbers. When it's false, when it's false, come on now. Oh geez. When it's false, this is all of your answers. The number statement, the false, and the no solution. All right, hopefully you learned something today. Um, some good stuff, some complicated, but you can do it. Thanks.